Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the things I hate about this industry. So if you're a window cleaner or thinking about getting into window cleaning, find out some things I don't like about it, maybe make some change. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Man, this is a uh, one of those uh, episodes that I know I touch on little pieces. If you're new to the industry, by the way, don't think this is me complaining at all. Everything in your life has some negatives probably to it, and uh, these are some things I wish I could change about the industry. And by the way, for a fun conversation, if you're watching on YouTube, um, go ahead and in the comments, tell me the thing you hate about the industry. Tell me one thing or two things. Pause the video right now, if you're on YouTube, and tell me what you hate before I start seeing, uh, before I start talking, and let's see if they're the same, same things. Because I'm pretty sure that what I'm gonna talk about is kind of everybody's pet peeves. That's a great industry. Everything is awesome about the industry except for a couple things I wish I could change or wish I could make a little bit better. Now, I've been in the industry for a very, very long time. I've been uh, owned my company 16 years. I've been doing um, this podcast for six years uh, every single week. I've done videos. I've done other series 10 years ago. I've done um, magazine articles and I've been very involved in the industry so I see every side of it and uh, this for me over the past you know we'll say 15 years uh, longer than that obviously but uh, has been a very very big part and I've been very um, submersed in it so maybe maybe I'm jaded from the years but it's always fun to kind of go off that one if you're looking for uh, learning something you can learn what I hate about the industry, but yeah, this is just more of a, a, a hangout type nation episode, but I'm going to start the whole thing off with one of my least favorite ones. One of the things that actually makes my blood boil, which if you guys know me, um, I don't, I don't get angry very often. I'm pretty chill, but it's the people who know it all. People who know it all. And let me preface by saying I don't know everything, not even close. I have been very involved in the industry and I don't know everything. The downside is is that we have some good money. It's a low cost of entry industry, if you will. So what ends up happening is you get some people coming into the industry, all of a sudden they're making window cleaning money, the same that everybody else is, and they go, oh man, I have this figured out, I'm a millionaire right? Here's my Rolex. Don't tell me anything about it. And uh, yeah, I think I know. I literally had somebody and this was a six months ago, not even four months ago. We were talking back and forth, kind of, I'm giving these options and and he's just, it was weird. He would ask questions and then fight me on the answer. Cool. Well, you know what? It sounds like, you know, you, 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 you already have everything figured out. I'm not sure why you're asking any more questions. Not that you have to take all my advice, but at least listen to it, right? And he goes, well, I think I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this now seven weeks. It was a real conversation, real real comment. And that is uh, my biggest pet peeve is these guys that just think they know everything, especially some of the uh, newer people. Uh, There's a couple on pro window cleaning right now that I personally blocked uh, off my own stuff. But every time something's there, they chime in with, this is how it is, and this is how, and it's so wrong. It's so wrong, but they think they know everything, and they're not willing to even hear somebody out. Now, the way conversation works is one person talks, one person listens, then responds, right? And you can have differenting, differencing, different, different, different opinions, right? This is why people can't talk about beliefs, right? You don't talk about religion. You don't talk about politics. Why is because there's no facts to prove anything. All you're doing is explaining your beliefs and it's very hard to change somebody else's belief because it's something you believe. You can't listen to facts to change that. In business, there is 99% fact 
99% fact. And then people come in there and they go, oh, it's the same people who complain about how you're ruining the industry because you're charging more than I am. And then in other posts, they complain that they can't even get jobs at how low they are. And it's like, well, it's because you're bad at what you do. You're, you're bad at sales. You're bad at, you know, you have kids doing your door knocking and that's why no one's hiring you. It's not because of your price. But hey, my big point and the whole don't uh, listen, I know everything is not that any other person is necessarily right. It's just that you can't listen. Even if you think that your ways are right, just listen to other people's opinions. Listen to the opinions, listen to some information, right? How did one person do it over another person? How did that, could that work for me? Let's think, everything should be open-minded, everything. You will never in your life get to a point that you know everything because everything is changing. Everything's changing, everything is moving, there's always new things, there's always new concepts to try, maybe something works for you and you have not tried everything. So you do not know everything, no one does. So, don't pretend you do. That's my biggest pet peeve, the I know it alls. Especially like the people who are like, I just started this summer, but I know everything. And then they're just rude and it's like. I probably hear it more though too, since I'm, I have to moderate groups and I talk to dozens dozens of window cleaners a day if not a hundred window cleaners a day with everything else that i'm doing it's it's uh probably just more because of that but don't don't think you know everything that's all just listen open-minded that's all maybe you do know everything just don't stop listening my next biggest pet peeve is uh is a big one because i know this one is absolutely wrong absolutely wrong and it's the my customers well, I can't charge that because my customers wouldn't pay that. I have to be in the field because my customers wouldn't hire anybody else. My customers only hire me because your customers are not different than other people's customers as a whole. Now, if you live in a population uh, town that is 10,000 people, maybe there's a little bit of a difference in your uh, area to people, I'm pretty sure you're around other places and there are people who have disposable income. Otherwise, you're not doing a luxury service like we are. But when you instantly assume you know what your customers are thinking, you're wrong. And the big problem is, is that people go, people always say, well, my customers fill in the blank, meaning I know what my customers want. I know. I'm gonna give you a really interesting example of price. This is one that I learned long, long time ago. We were doing house washing. And after the first year, I said, um, I'm gonna try something with house washing. We're talking price, this is like years, I mean, 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And I said, what I'm gonna do for the next week is that every person who calls in a house wash, I'm gonna double our price, just double it. I wanna see how many people do I drop? How many people do I keep? Now here's the concept of price. The interesting thing of price, by the way, if you don't think that you should charge more, then you're probably not spending enough on your business to start and B, uh, it doesn't sound like you're in business, it sounds like you're in charity, which is cool, do your thing. But you should always be striving to charge more so that you can spend more advertising, SEO, being a bigger company, having growth. If you don't want growth, it's structure, it's freedom. There's zero downside to charging more. It's just because you think that you can't charge more. I digress. And when I did that test, I doubled, doubled the price of our house wash, starting price. And that week, I had eight house washes, I think I booked. Eight calls, eight house washes. I doubled our price. Now, this is a long, long time ago. But I went from $199 to $399 as our minimum for house washing. I doubled our price one day. And I did not lose one single person. In fact, I closed everyone that I changed. Now, obviously, from there, we never went back, you know, price-wise. And I probably didn't get 
all of them. I have a very high close rate. I think I'm good at what I do. I think my prices are 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 fair, but on the um, better end. But I doubled it, and no one batted an eye. In your head, you go, "Well, I'm charging 199. I can't charge 399. I just can't. I can't. I can't double my price. No one's going to pay that." That's you thinking you know your customers better than your customers are. Instead of letting them make the choice, you made the choice. And you're shooting yourself in the foot. Now, this can go for lots of things, right? I can't use water-fed. Customers wouldn't want me to use their water. No one ever has said anything about us using their water. Ever, not ever. Ah, I can't get out of the field. People, if they didn't see me out there, they wouldn't have me there. They don't care about you. They care that you're nice. If you have somebody else taking your place in the field and they're nice, they will like them. All of these things you think your customers do is you basically saying, I know my customers better than they know themselves. And I'm not going to let them do things. So your customers are not different. You just are too scared to try something. So in turn, you are basically saying my customers do this. That's a hard one too because I think people after a while, not seven weeks, but I think after a while people do feel like they know their customers and you do, but you never really know where you are unless you're trying things. And it's really, really important when it comes to price and technology and staffing and blah, 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 that you listen to your avatar and you ask them basically by testing it. So get out of that mindset that your customers are different. That's a big one. Um, the next one is, is, is another pet peeve for me because I know how detrimental this can be. But it's the I'm too busy to advertise. When somebody is so busy, they shut off all their advertising. That is unfortunate. When you're busy, it means that window cleaning or whatever you sell is in everybody's head. Everybody wants to um, get that done service at that time. So if you're advertising, the best ROI you can have is in the perfect time of year for advertising. That's fair, right? Well, if you wait till January, which I know is ex exaggerated, and you do all your advertising in January, how many people are gonna call you? None. One, maybe. So if you do those same ads and the same spend while you're busy, you will have the highest ROI. Now people go, well, well, I can't advertise when I'm busy because I can't get the work done. I'm like three weeks out. I'm four weeks out. I'm five weeks. Great. A, add another crew. B, um, <laughs> if you're watching the video, a thumbs up just popped up. Um, but B, if you're um, that busy, uh, great. Hey, we can get you in the, you know, three weeks from now, four weeks from now, fill it up. Because they, the biggest thing when people call, and this is another hard part, is that when somebody calls and books the service and you get them in the books and it's done, that chore is off their list. It didn't get done, but the chore is off. They're like, oh, great. Okay, cool. Is that the soonest you have? It is. Okay, well, we can do that. Do, you know, premium slots, which are weekends if you want. You charge more and get your guys to do overtime if you want. But you have to do that. If you're so busy that you're turning off advertising instead of hiring or instead of booking people out a little farther, then you're done. Your growth is done. You're not growing. You just shut everything off. You said, oh, whoa, 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 we can't grow anymore. Okay, then you capped it out. You're, you're done. If you're done growing, you're done growing. But then don't later come in and then say, well, I like more customers. You know, we're really slow. It's January. Well, you, you should have pushed it when you could have. Now it's too late. So the big busy to advertise is just absolutely the, the wrong thing. One of the other pieces to that too in, in the too busy to advertise is SEO. You know I talk SEO. I think it's the most important thing you could possibly do for your business ever. Um, and before you text me and call me, which you still can, but it's Monk SEO. Everybody always asks me if I don't talk about it. But um, in SEO, people turn their SEO off in winter. 
I've heard that from a couple people that that's what they do. No, oh, we're saving some. That is absolutely, absolutely makes no sense to me. That makes no sense to me. If you turn your SEO off, all the mojo, momentum, everything else that you've done and put towards your company stops and you fall back. And then you go and you start it all over again in spring when you have the money. And all of a sudden you're trying to, you're still trying to stop the downward slope because you've stopped it. Now you're, you're trying to push it back up and all of a sudden it's winter again. And you turn it off. Well, you didn't get anywhere. SEO is an ongoing thing to keep yourself at the top. I always will pay SEO through the winter, hoping the other guys don't. Hoping that now when spring comes, I'm going to be absolutely the top and I'm going to stay there. SEO, just like advertising, you have to do when you're busy or when you're slow. You don't advertise, but you do do SEO. Changing things in the wrong mindset just tends to drive me nuts sometimes. Just because I know that you're hurting your company and then you will be striving to fix it when it's too late. In January, it's too hard to turn a company around when you should have when it was busy. Right? By the way, side note. This podcast today is brought to you by me, Jersey, a rep for windowcleaner.com. By the way, shameless plug, I am a rep. That's how I get paid. That's how I make my cheddar. That's how I afford my uh, extensive hair gel that everybody talks about and uh, my my free shirts. Um, but no, that's how I get paid. That's how I make my money. That is uh, how I get to be able to live. And by putting in your orders, all you do is hit save this cart in checkout and I put it in. You could text me at 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. My name is Jersey, the only one you know. Save it in your phone. Let me put your orders in. That's how I make money and it's like a, a virtual high five. If you ever think you get anything out of the content and want to maybe give back, that's how you can. And I would absolutely appreciate it. Uh, Big or small, it does not matter. Uh, All of them count. And it does not cost you anything extra. Absolutely nothing extra. And I can check your fitment. I can make sure you got the right things. I can do all of that. So use me as your rep. 862-312-2026. Another thing, get a magazine subscription to AWC Magazine. We're in a huge push for subscribers. Uh, Just happens to be always at the end of the year we do this big kind of push. So please go to AWCMAG dot com forward slash sub get a subscription it will be mailed to your door you'll get stickers for your buckets you'll be part of the culture you'll be nerding out like us learning everything and just kind of soaking it all in it's a great magazine awesome pictures just another awesome piece to a crazy great inner uh um, industry uh so get that too and by the way side note too if you want to do another thing that's absolutely free Subscribe to my YouTube. It's Jersey underscore nation. Just go search that and click subscribe. It's free. And I'm trying to get subscribers. There's a bunch of other content there. Different content, different shows, um, different just fun stuff. So anyway, go check that out. Shameless plug's done. I have to do that. Because if I don't like tell people to order with me, they put their own orders in. And then like I lose them as a customer. And if you put your own own order in, I don't get any cheddar. And I like to make money and live. So anyway, (laughs) there you go. Shameless plug works, man. Every week somebody's like, ah, shameless plug got me. So uh, do do let me know. Anyway, back to it. Uh, Another thing that I really dislike about the industry is how hard set people are on myths. Myths in the industry. And by the way, if you're watching and you are on YouTube, comment on other myths that you've heard of. But there's certain things that for some reason, they were put out there as fact. They're not. And people freak out. And then they, you try to explain, oh, no, uh, you misunderstood that. It's this. And they're like, mm, no, I'm just going to play it safe. First, the biggest one, razors scratch glass. Oh, they do tempered glass. I've even had people say that glass has changed over the years. And that now glass is softer. I've had people say that if the sun is out, then glass scratches. I've had the most ridiculous things that none of it's fact. The the fact that uh, razor scratch fabricating debris is true, but fabricating debris is so, so rare that 
even on tempered glass, which is the only place to fabric be, it still isn't a big thing. In all of my years, I've seen it one time. One time. People are like, oh, it always scratch. No, maybe that's dirt or something else. Maybe you didn't wash it. Maybe the windows are extra dirty. There's lots of things you're supposed to do and do it right, but that all tempered glass is going to scratch is garbage. And you can hear it. So if you are doing something and you start to hear ticks or sand marks or anything, then you just stop. You wash the window, squeegee it, look at what's going on. If you see something, you don't razor. I mean, it's such a simple thing, and a razor is such a valuable tool. Another one's water fed. I don't know how many times people are like, well, I got this and, and it, it, I, I heard, you know, I, I get tons of work from people who, uh, you know, don't ever want water feed because it doesn't work. No, you get lots of work from people who don't do window cleaning right. Everyone, every single person that's in window cleaning has picked up a job because somebody else squeegeed a window bad. They left streaks or spots or smears. Is that fair? Yes. With water fed, it's the same exact thing. You do a crappy job. It's not a magic wand. You do bad work. You're not going to get the customer. No, it's because it doesn't work. No, it's because you don't understand it. It does work. People too say, well, what if this, uh, what if this water fed doesn't work? Can I return it? It does work. It's science. It's a scientific thing. It works. Absolutely. It's like saying, you know, what if the, the, there is no sun tomorrow? The, 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 possibility of it being there is very very high it's the same thing with with water fed water fed works every time you do it right it works if you do it wrong it doesn't work right but then people say well i don't it doesn't work and you know or the um well i'll just get a di to start this is a starter that's not a starter kit di is different than rodi it's all your area and what's efficient and there's all these little things in the industry that I really, really don't like. And I know, too, that all of these little pieces have started somewhere. There's some truth to them, like any myth. And then they just get blown up. And then people think that that's just the way that it is. And there is no other way. And all these myths just, they really just uh, irk me because I have the argument about razors and low E, low E coating. 99% of the time, unless the window's done wrong, low E coating is in between the panes. If it's factory tint, it's in between the panes. But I can't, you can't, you can't scrape tint. You can't wool tint. You can't scrape low E. You can't. It's just glass. You can if the tint or the low E is in between the panes. You can, because you're not touching it, right? It's that same concept that people just always have it in their head. And that's cool. And I know that people have it and they're trying to, you know, make good with it. But understand that the myths are there and hear the real truths. Don't go off what you have heard, but more or less what fact is. It's tough. It's tough with myths. That's one of them that are really pretty tricky. Yeah. Uh, and the last one that I'm going to go over today, uh, which is one of my personal favorites to talk about. I do get a lot of angry emails from this one, but it's the quality debate, okay? People will tell you, and they'll tell the world, and they'll go online and everything else, and they'll say, um, all you have to do is do good work and people will call you back. That's that's the, the best thing you can do to grow a company. Uh, no, you're, you're focused on the wrong thing. Right, 90% is 100% when it comes to quality. If you don't notice something, it's clean. Understand that first off before you get mad. If you look at a window and the customer looks through the window and they don't see anything, it's clean. As soon as they see something, it's not clean, right? So when you look at what you're doing at 90%, you could be way more efficient to clean a window at 90% than these guys who are just go, I do absolutely perfect. You could do this in your window and never see. No one cares. They care that it's not bad work. If you brought your car to the car wash and it was still dirty, you wouldn't go to that car wash. It didn't wash your car. But if you look at your car and it looks clean, you're not looking at all the nooks and crannies. You're not really going into everything. And, well, it's not, it's like, ah, uh, that doesn't really matter. That's window cleaning. It's not just because you do good work. You 
Your USP is not that you clean the cleanest window. No one cares that you are cleaner clean than the other guy because they've never used everybody to know who cleans it better. They know who doesn't do a good job. But cleaning a window where they look at it, nothing is there, they can't see anything, and somehow spending another 10 minutes on it to make it even better does nothing. The quality debate is not real. You cannot do crap work, but you do not ever need to do 100%. Now, the problem with this is people have a lot of pride in what they do, and I totally get that. I love doing the things I do, but doing them well. I also understand that it's a business. Time is money. Making someone happy is a degree. If I can clean a window 90%, from 90% to 100%, the person's the exact same happy, why would I do 100%? Why would I spend another you know, 20 minutes per window to try to get some kind of weird microscopic level of clean? The focus is not on the right spot. The focus should be on the experience. It should be on how that person feels when they hired you. How did it go? Everything's so, oh my gosh, so good, it's so happy. Oh, so, oh my gosh, it's not. They have a great experience, they come back. And that is in everything ever you've ever bought. If you went to a store and they didn't have the stuff you ever wanted, it was always dirty, it was the whatevers, you don't go back to the store. If you go to a restaurant, the food is garbage, the servers were jerks, you don't go back to the the store. If it's bad, it's bad. Right? The thing that people understand is it's the experience. The guys that understand the experience side of it create a USP that dominates markets. Why do you think that sometimes certain people, you're like, find out this company, this company's like two years older, they're doing what? I, they must have really got lucky with a lot of stuff. Or, or they're focused on other things. Maybe their experience is amazing. My dentist clothes and your dentist clothes, if you do it right and you create the best experience and you start doing phone bids, which are instant, you can book people right on the phone, do, done, everything, your USP, your close rate can be 90% plus. The dentist clothes is 95 plus percent, meaning every person you do if you do that right with confidence and you've created a great experience, 95% of your customers will be booked every six months for the foreseeable future until they move or die. If you're not seeing those numbers, there's other things you can do. Oh, well, I got lucky. No, he's put the pieces into play. If you're too fergus, well, they call me back because... I'm really nice and um, I do really good work. Neat. But the other 10 companies they haven't used, they assume are nice and assume do good work. So you're not doing anything. You've done nothing. You're focused on something that no one focuses on. Right? That's the debate and the quality side. Is you can't do crap work. And we've all seen crap work. That's how we get jobs sometimes like we talked about. You can't do crap work, but you do not have to focus on the quality side of it like anything. And that's where the big piece is because people think that it's somehow against them if I say, hey, lower your quality a bit. No, I'm saying you can work a little bit faster by still giving the customer what they perceive as 100%. Anyway, that's it. That's my episode. These are the things that I hate in window cleaning. I mean... It's a very short list, and I know they're just pet peeves. Some of them are, uh, you've heard the saying that uh, it's like being pecked to death by a duck. That's what some of these are. It's, you know, it's every time you go on and uh, every post I make, someone ends up commenting and they know everything. Or they do, my customers are, or all these little things. So they're not really big reasons. I don't really hate much in the industry, but these are ones. I hope you're on YouTube, and I hope that you told me your Uh, most hated things and I even more hope you use me as your rep and by the way a ton of you I talk to 
and uh, you're in the middle of putting an order in or something. Maybe I talked to you in chat. You're like, oh, man, I listened to the podcast. Awesome. You should use me as your rep because I would love that. I make it as easy and as fast as possible, and I am genuinely grateful to all of you who do that. So please use me as a rep. Use me. And also subscribe if you see me anywhere. TikTok, my followers have stopped. Um, I'm stuck. Instagram, I'm stuck. Uh, subscribers on my YouTube channel, I'm slow. I just want to have more. I want to have more of you finding my content, more stuff, more everything. Uh, I know I'm being selfish, but please, if you see me anywhere, uh, follow me, give me a thumbs up, it always helps. And uh, yeah, I hope you don't have a huge list of things that you hate on in the industry. More importantly, I hope you have an amazing week and you go out there and be epic.